Hello, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the properties of the graph y equals e to the power of x. Now we're going to start off by sketching this graph and seeing what it looks like uh, and then we'll talk about the gradient of this graph at different points and go into a bit more detail on that too. I'll timestamp the different parts of the video so you can skip through to whichever part you want to see and if you do find it useful go over to my channel where I have loads of other maths tutorials. Okay, let's start off by drawing the graph of y equals e to the power of x. Okay. Now, this shouldn't be anything too unfamiliar because this is just an exponential graph where we have a base that's positive and greater than 1. And so hopefully we recognize this is going to represent exponential growth. And so this graph is going to pass through the y-axis at the point y equals 1 because when x is equal to 0, e to the power of 0 is 1. And because this is representing exponential growth, hopefully we'll also remember that as x tends towards positive infinity, the output of the graph is going to grow exponentially and also tend towards positive infinity. And as x tends towards minus infinity, the graph is going to tend towards zero and there's going to be an asymptote along the x-axis. So let's kind of put all of that information together and draw a little sketch of this graph. So it's going to start close down to zero and it's going to grow, pass through the y-axis at one, and then it's going to grow up exponentially like so. So this is what the graph of e to the x is going to look like. Now, initially, this just looks like any other exponential graph, okay? It doesn't seem particularly special. So let's now look at a property that this graph has that makes it incredibly useful for us in mathematics. So let's pick a point, let's say the coordinate x equals 1. So when x equals 1, the output of this graph would be e to the power of 1, okay? So that would be the coordinates of the function at this point. Well, let's now look at what the gradient of the graph is at this point when x equals 1. And I'm going to represent that using a tangent line like so. So when x equals 1, the gradient of this curve at that point is e to the power of 1. Okay. Let's now look at when x is equal to 4, for example. So that's this point up here. So that has the coordinates 4, e to the power of 4. And again, I'm going to represent the gradient of the curve at this point with a tangent line. Whoops, let me try and draw a better tangent, there we go. Now the gradient of this tangent is equal to e to the power of 4. And you might be starting to notice a pattern and that is that the gradient of the curve is equal to the output of the curve at that point. You see, hopefully you can see how that matches up. So let's look at a generic case now. So let's pick a generic x point, you know, x and the coordinates of the graph at this point would be x e to the x and so the gradient of the curve at this point would be e to the x. And so we can say that the derivative, so dy by dx, of the function e to the x is just e to the x. It's its own derivative. And this means that using this exponential function, so e to the x, makes maths a lot easier for us. Because whenever we're modeling exponential growth, so you know it might be of a population of animals or something, or exponential decay you know, of a radioactive substance, if we choose to use the number e as the base, when we're calculating rates of change, so we're calculating derivatives, because it's its own derivative, it just means the maths becomes a lot easier. And so it makes the maths a lot simpler, which is why we choose to use it. And it's why it's such a useful number for us. Now you might be thinking, why is it its own derivative? because I've kind of just told you that. Uh, and one way to look at it would be through differentiation from first principles. So I've got the function e to the x, and let's use the definition of differentiation from first principles and put in what we know. So I'm gonna copy and paste this part just to save a bit of time. So to find the derivative, we're gonna take the limit as delta x tends to zero of f of x plus delta x, which is just e to the x plus delta x minus f of x, which is just e to the x, all over delta x. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is notice that I could rewrite this, I'll do it at the side, so e to the x plus delta x, I could rewrite as e to the x multiplied by e to the delta x, because the bases are the same, so I just sum the exponents. So let me copy and paste this down, and I'm gonna rewrite that. There we go. So I'm gonna rewrite this as e to the x multiplied by e to the delta x. Now another thing is on the numerator, okay, I have an e to the x in both of these terms, so I'm going to factorize that out. So again, I'm going to copy and paste this part down, and then I'm going to factorize out e to the x. And so I get e to the x 
multiplied by e to the delta x minus 1 over delta x. Now, this is something you're probably not too familiar with in uh, A-level maths, but when we're calculating a limit, okay, if we take a look here, we're multiplying everything in the limit by e to the x. And e to the x doesn't depend on delta x, so this is kind of like an independent thing in the limit. And so we can actually pull that out to the front of the limit. And so I could say, well, the derivative, f dash of x, is equal to e to the x multiplied by the limit as delta x tends to 0 of e to the delta x minus 1 over delta x. Now, when it comes to calculating this limit here, okay, we don't really need to worry too much about doing that in A-level maths, but if you are interested in how to do that, I'll leave a link to an article below that kind of explains it quite nicely. Um, but what we could do is just use our calculator, and we're seeing what happens as delta x gets really, really small. So I'm going to type into my calculator uh, 0 0.000, just tons of zeros, and then a 1 at the end for a really, really tiny number. I've got 1 times 10 to the power of negative 18, so a really, really small number. I'm then going to clear my calculator and leave that in as the answer, and I'm just going to type in e to the power of answer, which is that tiny number, minus 1, all divided by answer, which is, again, a really, really small number. On my calculator, that's giving me that this limit equals 1, which it is actually equal to. The limit of this is equal to 1. If we evaluate it, we get 1. And so I'm just doing 1 multiplied by e to the x. And so the derivative f dash of x is e to the x multiplied by 1, which is just e to the x. And so it's its own derivative. OK, so another way we could look at this is graphically. OK, and you can see here I've opened up Desmos. And I have a graph of this red curve here, which is f of x equals a to the power of x. And you can see here I've got this slider. And as I change uh, the value of a, you can see the curve changes. Okay. So currently we're looking at the graph of 1.4 to the power of x. That's what this exponential graph looks like. Now I'm also going to add on to this graph y equals f dash of x, which is just the graph of its derivative. Now we know already that e to the x is its own derivative, right? So the question is, well, we know the answer, but what we're saying is, is there a base a that I can choose that makes the graph of y equals a to the x equal to its derivative? So let's change the slider and see what happens. And as I change this value of a, you can see the curves are getting closer and closer together. And then at this point around here, you can see they're basically the same. And as I continue to increase a, they then move further apart. And you can see for the value of a that's you know 2.7 whatever, some other digits, in fact, we know already it's e, the two curves are the same. And so if I let a equal e, you can see the curve and its derivative are the same. And so we can see that, well, e to the x is its own derivative. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, do go over to my channel where I have loads of other math tutorials. And thanks for watching.